Hello, YouTubers, Hans, friends, Hans, compatriots, Hans. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today, let's go to Japan. And I want to talk about Fukushima. And uh, let's remember that uh, even though uh, most Americans uh, have forgotten about Fukushima, Fukushima has not forgotten about you. And uh, so, anyway, uh, what we have is uh, some five years after the tsunami and the destruction of the uh, nuclear reactor there. And the slow admittance of, uh, of one uh, lie after another for five years, including the fact that now we know there's been a triple meltdown. And uh, for years they denied that. And so it's essentially everything that we've heard from TEPCO and Japan about Fukushima for the last five years has been a lie. And that will all be corrected. And, that, and the corrections will all be accompanied by lies that won't get corrected for the decade after that. So we have a probably a, at least another decade, if not several more decades of lies to look forward to. And let's also remember that uh, uh, the likes of Ms. Milky the Clown, of course, are carrying on the uh, the vigilance, the daily vigilance of updating us on what is what, one of the most important stories on the globe today. I, however, have chosen another path. I, I see an unending supply of uh, daily bad news coming from from Fukushima, punctuated by really horrifying things uh, every few months or every couple of years, you know. And so that we have another horrifying event. So here I am reporting on it, and uh, this sounds like it's pretty truly horrifying. One of the reasons why I know that it's horrifying because in, in 2011, uh, what's happening now was considered the worst case scenario. So uh, kind of looks like uh, we're at that worst case scenario. And if it's the worst case scenario, I assume there's not a worser case scenario. Although we're going to find out if uh, any place we're going to find out if there's a worser case scenario will be Fukushima. So anyway, what we have is uh, through technology, uh, we have uh, discovered that apparently there's no fuel inside uh, reactor number one core. There's no spent fuel left. There's no water. There's nothing. It's empty. So, in other words, uh, theoretically, it's dropped to the bottom of the primary containment vessel, and uh, there's uh, questions now as to whether it's uh, penetrated the outer wall. And I wanted, I had, wanted to do a little research into that to find out, well, just how, how bad is it? Because the, everything I'm seeing, uh, it sounds horrifying, but they seem to be kind of playing it down, and I seem to recall that being a pretty dire situation. And, uh, of course, it would be a dire situation because if it penetrates all the way through, uh, the, the, the radiation will be completely exposed. Uh, and I, I can't even imagine uh, how they would address the, the issue of removing this as it penetrates uh, through the ground. And then also, uh, one has to ask um, if, uh, if it's already down there, uh, where all the water, I assume they've been pouring water on it supposedly to cool it, for the last five years, and now that water is all gone, uh, poured uh, straight over a molten, melted core and into the groundwater and uh, into the, the ocean and uh, the aquifers and whatever else is in that area, I assume. Once again, I'm not a geologist. I'm not a scientist. I'm not even a nutritionist. And um, this doesn't sound too good. And uh, let's let's find out. If it isn't, if it if it isn't uh, good, and here's how we know it's not good. Um, in, a, in an article that appeared in 2011, uh, when this first happened, and they didn't know that the cores had melted, uh, they they said that uh, without a steady coolant supply, a hot reactor core will continuously boil off the water surrounding it until the fuel is no longer immersed. If the fuel rods remain uncovered, they may begin to melt and hot radioactive fuel can pool at the bottom of the vessel containing the reactor. In a worst case scenario, meltdown scenario, the puddle of hot fuel will penetrate the containment vessel in its entirety, um, exposing uh, 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 vastly dangerous levels of radioactivity into the environment. Uh, so there, there's one simple uh, explanation of what we see here uh, very simple explanation, but I wanted to look into it a little bit more. So um, I found some more details, and I'm sure uh, others will find this interesting as well. The, these fuel rods I'm talking about are long uranium rods 
clad in zirconium alloy casing, and they're held in the cylinder-shaped array, and the cooling water covers all of that. And uh, heating up can actually burst this cladding, uh, this uh, zirconium encasing, and release the fission products of the radioactivity, which becomes this molten material. And then uh, to get a, a more of a description, uh, there's an article, and I'll attach these below, uh, from Scientific American in 2011 also, and this is before the worst case scenario had hit uh, then, as it has now. And they said that, quote, one of the, des and this is another thing that makes this uh, sound uh, very um, unfortunate indeed. Um, quote, one of the design disadvantages is that the containment structure is a light bulb shaped steel shell that's about 40 feet across, thick steel but relatively small. And it doesn't provide as much of an extra layer of defense from reactor accidents. So there's a great deal of concern that if the core does melt, the containment will not be able to survive. And if the containment doesn't survive, we have a worst case situation. If a core melts, it will slump to the bottom of the reactor vessel, probably melt through the reactor vessel onto the containment floor. It's likely to spread as a molten pool like lava to the edge of the steel shell and melt through. That would result in a containment failure in a matter of less than a day. So here they reveal that the scenario that we see unfolding in Fukushima right now um, would, would take less than a day to penetrate the containment vessel failure if there is molten fuel that dripped down to the very bottom of this containment vessel. And most likely this has occurred. It would only take a day. Um, so we can assume that it's probably already occurred. Uh, we, we have no idea how long ago this occurred. But uh, we, it's safe to say that uh, if this core has melted through, it, it is or will be penetrating the uh, containment vessel itself uh, in a matter of time. So uh, Fukushima continues to get worse and worser. So we've gone from a worst case scenario, which is now occurring uh, five years later, and apparently has been occurring all along, to a worser situation. What's worser than worser? I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?